bunch of all of our musicians and singers. It's beautiful. Daniel chapter 11, verse number 32. Amen. I feel Jesus in the house tonight. Once again. Once again. Hallelujah. Prayer works. Prayer changes things. And the most important thing prayer changes is me. Prayer changes me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Jesus, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your spirit we felt today. I thank you, Lord, for the, the wonderful music and singing and, and the talent that you have blessed us with. But, God, I pray that the word sinks into us and we realize that we're going to have to have a relationship with you that is more important, that is more profound, that is more powerful than any we might have with anybody or anything in this world. You've got to be number one. You've got to be number one, Lord, and we want to keep that covenant. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel Jesus tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. We've got to begin to yield. We've got to begin to yield. We've got to learn to yield to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The word covenant is a Hebrew word which means to cut or divide. In most scriptures, the word implies to cut the covenant. Hence the implementation of circumcision, which means a cutting around as evidence of the covenant between God and Abraham. A covenant between men was fairly common. I remember uh, uh, Philip Burns and I one time, uh, we used to read Louis Lamar books a whole lot and a lot of Western books and check out things from the library. And, and then Brother David, we would play out in the yard. They used to live up in the bottoms over by the third levee and, and we would play around up there and, and we, would, we would reenact things things and and I remember on more than one occasion brother Terry we was going to be blood brothers you know and and we we each cut our hand and we put them together and 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 it, it was a a a, a a couple of children trying to play at, at something that in Jesus' day was fairly common. And it was taken very, very seriously by all parties involved. For instance, if a covenant was made between two families, it would be observed by those who weren't even born when the covenant was established. The children, the grandchildren, and so on would still respect the terms of that covenant. To covenant, cut a covenant with a man was not unusual, but, but a covenant being cut with God was unheard of. And the covenant established between God and Abraham was the first of its kind. And, and this covenant, Brother David, was reciprocal. It, it had terms on both sides. And, and the terms of the covenant uh, uh, in return for complete submission to serve and worship God uh, and worship Him alone because He alone is God. And He alone cast abroad the heavens. And, and He alone spoke the earth into existence and to, to submit and worship and love the one true God alone was the terms that were accepted by mankind and Abraham was given the threefold promise of financial blessings, physical blessings and spiritual blessings the Lord will bless those that keep their word to him according to the word of God these promises are still available today but there is a difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant was established upon the promises to Abraham and sealed by a physical circumcision. But the new covenant was established upon the promises of Jesus Christ and is sealed by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Of not be being a creature governed by the Spirit that rules in the manner of the flesh, but one that rules in the manner of the Spirit. Hebrews says that the new covenant is established upon better promises. Promises of a new heaven and a new earth inhabited by new people who have been changed into the likeness of God Almighty. It is no stretch. It is no stretch to recognize that the world in which we live is falling in line with biblical prophecy. Read the Bible when it says in the last days perilous times shall come. Ladies and gentlemen, we indeed live in perilous times today. 
The degradation of the moral foundation of our society has decayed to the point that even the basic inalienable rights are now under attack and those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The time has now come in which we must make a decision. Will we adhere to the terms of the covenant that we have made with God Almighty that He has sealed and confirmed by us being baptized in His name and being filled with His Spirit? Or will we fall on the altar of self-satisfaction and self-preservation instead of placing our trust in God? Every failure is a result of a failure of faith. Every time that somebody walks away from God, there was an issue where their faith decreased. There was something that got in the way of faith and it became a matter of performance instead of a matter of faith in a God who has never failed it appears when I get done tonight y'all gonna think I've lost my mind or something but it appears that his patience with the world may once again be reaching its end it is apparent even to a simple observer that the constant attempt of the world and the powers to be to become as God has always been a precursor to judgment. If you remember Adam and Eve in the garden, the way that the devil tempted Eve, Brother Terry, was ultimately telling her, God don't want you to eat this, because if you eat it, you're going to be like him. It was an attempt to be like God, and Adam and Eve fell prey to the devil's promises and were cast out of the garden, and sin was introduced into the world. The flood, the ark, and Noah's subsequent salvation were results of God being forced by mankind into a place where he'd had enough, and he repented that he'd even made man, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Even the covenant of the rainbow spoke to the annihilation of a future people who would also behave in such an unrestrained manner. And the book of Matthew tells us, Brother Larry, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. But the Lord hung a rainbow out in the sky and said, I will never destroy the earth by water again, but we know well it will be destroyed by fire. The builders of the Tower of Babel were dispersed and became separated due to an inability to communicate as God confounded their ability to speak to each other simply because they decided they were going to overrule, overpower, and outsmart God by building a tower up to the heavens to escape a flood that was never going to happen again anyway. Nebuchadnezzar found himself grazing as a wild animal in the pasture. His fingernails grew long, his hair grew long, and he was in fact grazing as an animal. Saul found himself estranged from God, mad and crazy in his mind, and ultimately replaced as the anointed one of God. Solomon basking in the glow of the approval in all of the world's renowned. Even the queen of Sheba said, the, the half was not told to me of how great your kingdom really is. Found himself, God help me right now, found himself forsaken, even the source of his ability, wisdom, and wealth. And by all indications, dying away from God and becoming the one who brought punishment and a kingdom divided of God's people. The prophetic word of Daniel in our text. While certainly reflecting the actions of his day, and if you read what took place among the ruler in the day of Daniel, that Daniel's talking about the abomination of desolation that was also in his day, and as a type of what's going to come, uh, the, the, the emperor, the ruler of that day, and his, my, his name has left my mind, and I'm so sorry for that. That's been happening to me a lot, lot lately, but, but uh, uh, he, he did so many things uh, to, to desecrate and, and to, to thumb his nose at, and, and, to spit in the, in the law of God and, and to spit in the, in the ideology of the people of God, even going as far as to bring a pig into the tabernacle and sacrifice it on the altar of God. It was a world in Daniel's day that was doing everything they can to destroy the work of the Lord, the people of the Lord, and the people's faith in God. It is very, very, it is so difficult to have faith in a God that always brings you out. When you're looking in the face of, of the very, the temple, the, the tabernacle, the holy place, being desecrated in such a manner, and there's nothing that anybody can do. While certainly reflecting the actions of this day, 
It's also prophesying as to the world in the days of our Lord's return. There will be a people who will do wickedly by the covenant. They will disregard the promises once made to love and serve the Lord with all their heart and begin to serve the creature more than the creator. And most of the time that creature that you serve is you. It is that world in which we live. When the argument of the day seems to be that regardless of how I've been made by God, I've got the right to change it. I can choose to be a woman if I was born a man. I saw something somebody read the other day. You change all your equipment. You cut it off, change it, turn it inside out, put stitches in it. You know, I, I don't matter what you do, but your DNA still is who God made you. You slice it and dice it all you want to, but at the end of the day, you're still who God made you. But, but Brother Terry, it's not the act that is the problem. It's the attitude of people that saying we know more than God. We're smarter than God. We have been elevated above what God even wanted. The very basic existence of mankind is declared by God. And He made a man and He made a woman and He put them together to procreate. He made them to complement one another in every way. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, and sexually. When babies are being killed before they can even be brought to birth. More every year than was killed in all of World War II. More every year than are killed by drunk drivers. More every year than are killed by guns. And it's always indicative. You hear me now. To kill. God help me Jesus. I'm not going to preach long. That's what's going to amaze you. I'm about done. It's always been an indicator of people trying to snuff out God when they start killing babies. Think about it. To stuff out the people of God, Pharaoh said, kill all the male children, age two and below. When Herod thought there was another king being raised up, he sent around and told him, kill all of the baby boys in the kingdom. And now today, I'm not, this is not a political platform, this is a Holy Ghost Bible believing platform established by God Almighty. When I, when I preached that this morning, Brother David, and, and I realized that, that the Lord told Jeremiah, before you were in your mama, I knew you. And I sanctified you in your mama. You're going to have to get up really, really early to convince me that God is favoring killing babies before they're born. Well, I know we ain't supposed to talk about that stuff, especially when it's getting shot out there on the, on the web, world wide web, and anybody can see it. Uh, and I gotta let you know that, that there, that there is a, there is a tendency to, to be a little bit of, of apprehensive about that. Uh, but who am I if I don't preach truth? Who am I if I don't preach what thus saith the word of the Lord? Who am I if I do not declare what the Bible says? There is terminology that has been introduced into our world today that did not even exist as a word when we were children. And it has been embraced by the mainstream of our college age society that in itself defies God. As I write these notes, as I wrote these notes today, I could not help but hear the cry declared by Isaiah's pen when he said, Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? Watchman on the wall, what is the night bringing? What's moving in the night? What's operating in the night? The night has surrounded us. It has come against us with all of its force. It's the darkness of blindness of deception. The man of sin, the world system, will flatter and corrupt those who have disregarded and violated the covenant with God. The world system is in fact now, today, defying everything that was established by God Almighty from the time of creation. You will find out as we begin to preach and teach further into this holiness uh, that when the Apostle Paul begins to talk about the separation of the sexes, uh, Brother David, he takes us all the way back to creation to establish those principles because they are... 
They are not ours to do with as we will, Brother Terry. But this world was given to us by God to subdue it and have dominion over it. We were never meant to be subject to no dog or no cat or no porcupine or no hog. We were meant and handed and commissioned by God to subdue the world and have dominion. But we have our society has, has made so many mistakes. They've made so many wrongdoings. Until now, they have found themselves wake up with a reprobate mind and they no longer know what's right or wrong. As a matter of fact, we have segued so far that wrong has become right and right has become wrong. When the one who stands up and declares what thus saith the word of the Lord is ostracized, ridiculed, made fun of, and there will be papers printed tomorrow down in those who stand for the word of God. Watchmen, what of the night? The world system, the Antichrist. The Bible tells us that the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. It's already op operating. It's no stretch at all. You don't have to look far to see it. You don't have to look far to see it. The world system. They will flatter and corrupt those. I saw a picture yesterday. My first response was anger. My second response was, oh God, no. It was about 10 or 12 former apostolic pastors that had gotten together. And there was such an arrogance. There was such a, a look of disdain upon their face as it was done to, to, to ridicule those who have stood true to the foundation upon which we were built of holiness and separation from God. But primarily in this group uh, of the new birth message uh, of repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues, uh, the new birth, as the Bible declares, has been done away with as optional. They will flatter And corrupt those who have disregarded and violated the covenant. I entered into a covenant with the Lord. How is it that I submit myself to Him in repentance? And I submit myself to Him in water baptism. And I submitted myself to Him in being filled with the Holy Ghost. But Paul declared emphatically to the Galatians, Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect or complete by the flesh? And my cry today is no. The only way to completion is the same way you got started. It's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. I was born by the Spirit, I will be perfected by the Spirit. I was brought into existence by the Spirit and I will be taken to heaven by the Spirit. But the people who do know their God Simon whom Oh God, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some they say thou art John the Baptist. Some say thou art Jeremiah. Some say thou art Elias or one of the prophets. But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter declared emphatically, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus so proudly and profoundly said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father which is in heaven and thou art Peter and upon this rock oh upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and the gates of hell the, the, the penalty of death the enemy himself shall not may be seated. You see, the rock is not Peter. The rock that the church is built upon is the knowledge of who Jesus is. That He is God manifest in the likeness of sinful flesh. There is no trinity. There are no three gods. There is one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. I am that I am. Before 
Abraham was, I am. I am he which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to get a revelation in you of who Jesus Christ is. He's not a story in December. He's not a tragedy in April. But he is the son of the living God. Please be seated. The people who do know their God, who do know their God, when they sing these songs tonight, and I really want to try not to even mention this. But when they sing these songs tonight, Brother David, God is my witness. This morning, every song they sing went right with what I preach. And tonight, every song they sang was glorifying God. Glorifying God. How in the world? I, I, I'm going to step put my pastor hat on for just a minute. How in the world are we still sitting there when there's this much power moving in this place? And all they're singing about is how wonderful my Savior is. How triumphant my Savior is. That He's my King. And it's not somebody I don't know, Brother Terry, but it's Jesus Christ living on the inside of me. It's the Holy Ghost that changed me. It's the Holy Ghost that saves me. It's the Holy Ghost that keeps me. It's the Holy Ghost that comforts me. It's the Holy Ghost that gives me peace. So sometimes I can't sit still. Sometimes I can't sit there and hold on to myself. I got to run. I got to jump. I got to spin. Because I cannot control. And it's all because I know who Jesus is. I know him. I know him. He's so much more than just a story. Oh, he's my comfort in the nighttime. When I get up and hear a loud noise, I say in Jesus' name, and he's my peace. He is wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his kingdom and government, there shall be no end. <laughs> But the people who do know their God. in this day that the church of the living God's going to have to stand up and declare I know who my God is. It's not the God of the world. It's not the God of public opinion. It's not the God of sexuality and immorality. But it's a God that made me just like he wanted me to be and I'm going to rejoice in who I am. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The people that do know their God shall be strong. Shall be strong. Shall be strong. 
turn to your neighbor and say they'll be strong they'll be strong the world might call me weak I may feel like I'm weak in my body but it's not my body brother Terry that rules this earth this body shall go back to the dust the worms will eat my flesh what Job said but I shall know him my redeemer liveth and he sits on the throne Hallelujah. Please be seated for just a moment. Just a moment. Those who have maintained the terms of this covenant, those who have kept it, which is established on better promises, not of this world, but of the world to come. It's good. It's wonderful. It's great. I love to have good church, but this ain't heaven. They who do know their God shall be strong. Shall be strong. His perfect strength is manifested in my weakness and the enemy cannot figure that out because even though <laughs> the enemy doesn't understand that when he gives me all he got and I'm wounded and I'm bleeding and I'm sore and I'm broken that then but then it is oh God it is then I said it is then that I'm strong it is then that I trust in the everlasting arms of God it is then that I have nothing within myself but I lean back and rest upon his bosom and it is then I am made strong and his strength is made perfect in my weakness and therefore when I'm weak then am I strong. I'm strong in faith. I'm strong in hope. I'm strong in love. I'm strong against the wiles of the devil. I can stand against the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. I am strong in his strength. But you've got to listen to the word of God. You've got to listen to the word of God. Brother David, it's not just lip service. It's not just something that sounds good. It's not words that throw off the tongue. And it's not putting on a good front. Because the Bible says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong. The people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do. They shall be strong and they shall take action. They shall be strong and they shall overcome. They shall be strong and they're going to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They shall be strong and they're going to speak to the dead and they'll rise up. They shall be strong. They're going to pick up any deadly thing and it won't hurt them. And they're going to be so strong if they drink any deadly thing. It shall not harm them. They shall speak with new tongues and prophesy. We will not go out without a fight. Stand. Come to the music. We will not go out without a fight in this last day. We will not sit by idly, but we will be strong and do exploits. We will not bow down at the altar of public opinion and die without a whimper. We will see the sick healed. We will see the dead raised. We will see the promises of God follow us. These signs shall follow them that believe because the Bible says, and it is true across all generations, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's why I will be strong and I will do exploits. There ain't but one side that wins. Oh, oh God. It's a sad thing. It's a sad thing, Brother David. It's the world within which we live. Can I find 50 righteous? Can I find 40 righteous? Can I find 30 righteous? Can I find 20? Can I find 10? And he couldn't find 10 righteous! The angel of the Lord went in and took Lot by the hand and led him out. And his wife turned around and became a pillar of salt. And they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah went in the ark. And they knew not, Brother McKinney, 
Till the rain came. Till the rain came. And we're fixing to have a throw down in here. We're going to respond to the word of the Lord. But let me tell you something. It's not all about how you respond right now. It's about how you're going to respond in the face of adversity. It's how you're going to respond. When you're faced with the option of laying down on the covenant. I made a covenant with the Lord. And Brother Terry, he's kept his end of the bargain. <laughs>